I know, right? My glasses are broken. <laughs> this is my letter to Emily Badsville. You may not, may not remember me. It's Rich from The Dancing Girl. I always respected you and wondered if I may ask you an opinion on something. You see, I've been stuck for three years, at least, in poverty because I've been excommunicated from the Australian government. It's a literal conspiracy. I've proven it, but no one is listening and no one cares. I've been victimized, oppressed, and robbed of millions of dollars, systemically and politically, and had my prosperity intentionally redacted from me. I can't get a lawyer. I've never had one because I've been locked out. I'm a failed whistleblower, despite being a public official for the purposes of the PID Act. And I can't report these crimes to police because they're just an extension of the government I'm fighting and the police are corrupt. It goes right up to the Prime Minister's office, who first say my freedom of information is voluminous and complex, and then deny the existence of any documents whatsoever, which is a lie and it's also deceitful. This would have um, revealed, and no government agency will admit, that a relationship existed with my former partner who I was engaged to for five years, an ASIO agent, and he owes me a fair, equal, legal settlement. It's a complex story. The abuse has been years long, and three years ago, I sadly attempted to take my own life from the neglect and financial control. And that happened inside Werribee Mercy Public Hospital. It was deemed a lethal injury and a fatal attempt, and they revived me after accidentally finding me with no pulse, unresponsive, and I was revived from certain death. And now there's a cover up about that, a general whitewashing of the whole tragedy, another one, and it has actually injured me and it's affected my memory. So my question, dear Emily, is how can I get my point across now that I've been excommunicated from the federal government and all my family and friends have followed suit? A conspiracy relies on the victim's inner circle to be compromised and infiltrated. And this has absolutely happened because there's no one left to turn to. I can't fight the whole world. I live in poverty and I have no permanent home, no money, no lawyer, no doctor, no psychologist, no psychiatrist, and an ombudsman won't look after me, a lawyer won't look after me, the Prime Minister won't look after me, the Attorney General won't look after me, the NDIS won't look after me, my family won't look after me, I can't ask a fireman, a police officer, a neighbour, a friend, or Joe Bloggs down the road. It seems no one can help me. I'm banned at the Australian Financial Complaints Authority, despite their six-week turnaround time for financially marginalised individuals. They knew of my financial detriments in 2019 or 20 and took over two years to come to no determination and then banned me. And my documented human rights abuses by an NDIS worker, um, no one will sign off on it that would legitimise it and make the report a factual thing. And the Australian Human Rights Commission refused to investigate. The National Anti-Corruption Commission won't even acknowledge me, and in my case, when it pertains to me, the Anti-Corruption Commission are actually corrupt. I went to the head honcho. I asked the Prime Minister in a long detailed letter, what can I do about this situation and demanded some justice. And he sent a polite letter back um, and sent me to the Attorney General Mark Dreyfus's office, but he's never answered me, my emails or my phone calls. And his office, nameless public officials, sent me to AGIS who investigate ASIO 
Um, but HOs already know about my story and have refused to investigate my former partner. And they also sent me to the Commonwealth Ombudsman, but of course, I'm a failed whistleblower there at the Ombudsman and they refuse all correspondence. And it might be fair noting that a very powerful lawyer opposed me in 2017 for a malpractice case and he silenced my evidence and the transcript of that evidence at the Health Complaints Commissioner, the Mental Health Complaints Commissioner, the Police, IVAC, Victorian Inspectorate, NHPOPC, APRA and the Commonwealth Ombudsman and he is a man who advertises, he informs government policy and also advises the Ombudsman. And that was a little conspiracy to prevent the cause of justice that I knew was happening, I didn't know how, and I'd only discovered that after I um, survived my suicide attempt. And the hard thing is, I'm actually crazy. I've been diagnosed with schizophrenia, ADHD, adjustment disorder, and now have a cognitive brain impairment from the suicide attempt. Um, but the fact I have a psychotic illness does not mean that a conspiracy isn't actually happening either. All it does is make my vile treatment even more abhorrent because it's literally torturing me. And this happens and is dealt to me systemically and politically and universally. Powerful people who are key stakeholders with enormous political power and money and influence obviously have wished to cause me harm and obviously want me dead. When I'm driven to the brink of actually doing it or suiciding or saying it to get traction for my issues because of the abuse and the sustained victimization and financial abuse, hello, hello, the cops come and they take me to hospital. But the hospital don't care. The health system and the hospital are only there out of the last resort obligation because my parents complain as a last resort to stop me from actually killing myself. And that's the least possible way a society could care for you after intentionally and maliciously pushing you to the brink, then delay a response to intervene when you threaten to top yourself. The last time I was released from hospital, the psychiatrist told me that I've been diagnosed with HIV. Uh, that was a method just to destabilize me. So when I was released from hospital, um, I damaged myself or suicide. I haven't got HIV. There's no one left to complain to. I have a beautiful husky, Crystal, and I really live for her. She's my only authentic friend and dog spelled backwards as God. And I miss my dog. She's in a kennel and I don't even know how I'll pay for that or even when I'll have a house to get her back. And recently they've asked me to pick her up and I have no facility to do so and no money to collect her. And if they take my dog as a last thing, I don't know what I'll do. The NDIS have locked away all my funding and Bill Shorten, the NDIS minister, when um, I said this financial abuse is pushing me to the brink, again sent cops, a big gang of cops, and they bashed my door in in the middle of the night and cuffed me without even shoes on and took me to hospital. Now, that's not a way you treat a person who's unwell. That's how you treat a person who's being victimized. I'm also a failed whistleblower at the NDIS and also the DSS who oversee the NDIS. Another time I was in hospital for nearly three months stint as a political prisoner. I wasn't even sick and the hospital and police oversaw my landlord go to my home, go inside and destroy everything I own and take it to the tip. There's no compensation or investigation, or there's no VCAT case. I have tried. They are literally destroying every single angle of my life, and they can act confidently, knowing that no one will stand up for me, and they do it with impunity. 
My nearly 20 year business website, richmclean.com.au, was maliciously destroyed by Micron 21, a government linked web based agency, and it instantly damaged my entire digital identity and the structure I use to make money and run my business. It was how I signed into banks, Centrelink, MyGov, websites, everything. And in one fell swoop, they just deleted it. And with it, a whole lot of evidence that I was using to oppose my victimization and the conspiracy. I've been beaten up inside a hospital by an underworld government thug. And this conspiracy is violent towards me, not only in its systemic and prolonged neglect. I've been surveilled by government agents at my old home and followed, and I'm under surveillance. I've filmed them and I've proven it and still no one is interested and no one cares. The police, interesting people, have witnessed my financial destruction over years and then literally ran me out of town, threatening me with the Mental Health Act because I didn't want to go back to hospital, the place I'd already died and that had covered up my injury. And I, I had to flee, basically as an innocent man and a fugitive in exile from society. And I've got a clean criminal record. Desperate and homeless and penniless a few weeks ago, I had nowhere to even literally be and I was in the car with my dog. I was begging my parents just for a place to stay or to put Crystal in the backyard and they sent me away. My brother and sister have literally rejected me and forsaken me and they refuse all communication despite me begging them that this persecution may kill me and in their pointed neglect they also can be said to intending me harm and they do so every single day. Every single day that I live in poverty without enough food or medicine or a home is another day that coercive financial control and family violence wins. And violence is never okay. In actual fact, um, it is a case of the whole government elongating and emboldening an already existing financial um, violence towards me and they do it by not acknowledging ever in any agency that a legitimate, factual and well-known relationship existed with my former partner. For someone who's had a mental illness since they were 20 and spoken all over the country on local, state, federal and international levels, in person, in the media and opening key keynote speeches and conferences and being well known to have a mental illness and having been hospitalised about seven times in the last three years. Um, I actually have no psychologist at the moment. I have no psychiatrist at the moment and I don't even have a GP at the moment. And the last time the hospital released me, the local community mental health care team washed their hands of me and I wasn't accepted as a client. The relationship with my former partner was a well-known fact with hundreds of friends and family. And I just can't get it through my head or believe that not a single friend or family member has managed to stand up for me in this family violence situation. He was apparently done for a million dollars embezzlement for his corrupt finances because of my whistleblowing, apparently, and now he's threatened to kill both me and my dog because of this. Um, I know that um, he's admitted to me that he was present at murders, he kicks dogs, he's a narcissist, he's an awful person. He used to be a drug dealer and he's a criminal. But he needn't worry about the harm occurring to me um, because he has the whole government on side, but still, if he finds us, he will kill us. Anyway, I'm just up 
and trying to think my way out of this nightmare and I have not slept. The NDIS won't release funds to pay for accommodation even though there is enough in my plan and today is the day that I'm homeless again. My problem is so epic, not a single carer or NDIS provider will report my human rights abuses for fear of reprisals or financial detriments from the federal government. And they as providers are under obligation to report such conduct um, to do with the NDIS code of conduct. And that reporting is mandatory. Dozens of public officials have made illegal choices in order to redact my prosperity and I've lost partner settlements, my insurances, a wrong TPD payout, business insurances, three work cover cases, I can't sue the hospital, I can't sue for my business being destroyed, I can't sue for my possessions being destroyed, I can't sue for being violently beaten up, I can't sue for my childhood sexual abuse. And they can do this with impunity and they're confident that absolutely no one will intervene. I don't know what else to do. I have a 600 video strong YouTube channel that I've made, sometimes angrily, over a two or three year period, protesting my treatment and my victimization and this conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. And I do so not to be troublesome, but because I'm demanding my human rights be restored and my human rights abuses acknowledged, and I would not need a YouTube channel and a whistleblowing website if I had a single person to have my back or to confide in. Really, the only thing that I have left is simple sentience and my anger and frustration but it's a self-fulfilling prophecy that I've been demanding things from family and what friends I have left and do so in an aggressive tone and then they blame me for being either crazy or for me abusing them when I've been literally abused for years and they've stood by, witnessed it happen and allow it to happen. I feel like I'm the only brave and courageous one in this story. Everyone else is happy to be ruled by the power of the day and never intervene in the scapegoat as long as their patch of dirt or prosperity isn't destroyed and they can have their level of comfort. Um, they don't want to be destroyed like my world has been and no one will stick up for me and sadly not uh, and sadly, not, not all, most people in society um, agree to be ruled and they agree to follow blindly. No one cares, but I still do. And I still protest this and I still do my YouTube videos and I'm waiting for the day of an acknowledgement in my injustice issues and someone to admit liability for the conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. This is the life of a scapegoat. And although it's a living hell, I have a very authentic and accurate opinion and view of society, which sees through all the smoke and mirrors and the deceit and the lies. And I'm a very powerful man for my um, resilience. And they're literally trying to sacrifice me and kill me because of that fact. I'm not incapable I've traveled the world and written books. I've been a public speaker and an advocate for 30 years. I've got a human rights award. I've got books of the year, wrote an autobiography, ran my own business for two years, published art books and a children's book, and I went off and got a doctorate. But they're destroying me and they're doing it systemically and politically, and they're doing it with impunity and no one will intervene and I can't pack my broken life back into the box the way it once was. I've been set up to fail again and again and exploited in the most brutal of ways. And now I live with one of three things to happen. One is jail. 
probably for a crime that I've not done or re readily admitted to, or they'll frame me for a crime and lock me away. Number two, they'll institutionalise me. The hospital have labelled me as having, quote, ingrained delusions of persecution. And this is the way I'm vilified. There's only victory and death left. Um, the death will be by neglect, and I'm not suicidal, but a, curse, a person and an individual in this society can't be expected to survive without basic things in life, which I don't have. Can I even be expected to live suffering such detriment and my very basic needs never met? Who's going to stick up for me now that, yes, I've made a cunt of myself and I admit it. Um, but you know what? If I had like raped a six-year-old and killed it, I would have still been offered a roof over my head and food from the government. And I'm not a rapist, pedophile or murderer. You know what I'm getting at? My treatment is worse than being ignored. It's been universally neglected. And I've pointed out my suffering to just about everyone and no one wins a vein. I'm finding it really absurdly a biblical amount of um, persecution and a biblical amount of forsaking. Maybe it needs a biblical answer. In the, in the, in the Bible, um, Jesus said, you don't understand what's happening for you, but one day you will. And maybe I will. Maybe the world will. In this way of being persecuted and victimised, the world is really causing me harm, great harm, every day. And I still live under the shadow of coercive financial control and family violence, and literally the victim of a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. And it has an intention, and that intention is to cause me harm and ultimately to kill me with malice. Anyway, maybe I should either join a monastery or get someone to help me who are already outlaws, like a motorcycle gang, who may be sympathetic to my persecution from authorities. I could swear a pledge to them to care for me because, let's be honest, my family, society and the government are barely helping me and in fact harming me and abusing me and the, and the government are the corrupt bad guys. Most people um, are patriotic and they actually um, have faith in the government, but for some people in society, the government can be worse than um, Chinese communism. Really can be bad. Add to all this and amplify my suffering with subsonic gang stalking and noise harassment in my houses and places I go that I've stayed at and also my computer being hacked and me unable to get Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn or Instagram. And I'm not even really sure how the powers that be manage to do this. What to do, what to do, what to do. Just do nothing. I am actually afraid that this systemic political neglect and victimization will kill me by the method they use, which is called no-touch torture. You see, they won't literally walk in and slit my throat or blow my head off, but they will make it so bad and attack me via proxy attack on my finances and rights. Um, and they have done it with such impunity and continue to do it and no one intervenes. And they'll keep doing that until I commit Harry Carry myself. Today, I've got no food, and that's an immediate issue, and one that I don't even have the know-how or the thought power to oppose anymore. I'm barely hanging in there, and day after day, after phone call after phone call, after email after email, after YouTube video, after responses from agencies and governments and lawyers, every single time, it's another clever excuse about how I'm asking for help and about how every single person can't or won't act 
to create a meaningful change in my situation. You see, gang stalking is real. I'm not stalked by just one or two or three people. This is gang stalking and it's real for me and it's not a delusion and it's proven by fact. They're still oppressing me and victimizing me and literally torturing me to death from afar in silent ways and that is so utterly cowardly of them and they do it from afar and they do it with impunity and they never make contact. They just get other people in other agencies and public officials, lawyers, politicians to do their dirty work. And this means for me that the government is absolutely corrupt. All you've got to do to inflict maximum damage is to add some drug dealers, take away the medication that um, encourage you to use drugs and add loads of free time to worry and also my mental illness for which I'm already vulnerable and then abuse me until that mental illness is amplified and you have the perfect ingredients for my destruction and they know it and everyone else knows it as well. Where will it all end? I once had a dream about Edward Allan Poe and I wondered why it came to me. It looks like I'm going to have to be killed so the coroner can investigate the cause of death if and when it happens. Mental illness or drugs will be blamed if I die and the world, politicians, public officials, people will exonerate themselves from any liability or wrongdoing or for their decisions which have caused so much financial detriment or malice and they'll exonerate themselves from any liability whatsoever and that's the curse of the stigma of mental illness something i campaigned against independently for 30 years and the level of betrayal from all of those organizations institutions and places schools exhibitions that i supported in my advocacy the level of betrayal from them is absolutely palpable and it can be seen now that I was absolutely seen coming a mile away and literally exploited for my story. Everyone knows and no one cares and it's tough being a scapegoat.